America is still the place to be. Just want to give all praises, glory, and honor due unto Yahweh Bashem El Shai, Bahashem Rakah Hakodash, and the blondest to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well, and that do teach well, and have taught me this truth. To you I say Shalom and Shalom to the hopeful elect. Kwame Asha Allah and Abba Baba. Now I was just watching this video here, a message from Florida leaving Canada, and um, this video was made by a man called Adam Nucci. And um, he's originally from Canada. He's from the province of Quebec. And he lives in the Montreal area. <clears throat> and, um, oh, by the way, you know, Canada, we don't have states. We have provinces, right? So it's different. Well, we have provinces and we have territories. So it's different from America, the U.S. of A, where you guys have states. And over here, we have provinces, and each province is different. And um, this guy, he was just going into how pretty much America is the place to be at. And he wants to leave Canada. And um, he is actually preparing to leave Canada forever. And he's going to move to Florida. That's what he's saying in his video. And he was just comparing... Canada and the U.S. And he was comparing the lifestyle on how Canadians live versus how Americans live. And he was basically saying, you know, Canada is pretty much dead for the most part. And uh, he, I watched some of his other videos and he, he went on to say as well that pretty much if you live here in Canada, you either work for a corporation or you work for the government. And if you are an entrepreneur, which we don't have much, that's what he was saying. You don't have a lot of entrepreneurs. And if you do, they all move to the States. And it shows you that America is still the place to be at in the year 2023, going into the year 2024. Even though America is on its decline. And he also mentioned that Pretty much different, you know, different people that live within the U.S. and the different states. They're seeing a lot of problems about how the standard of living is going up, but it's still a better place to live overall. Especially in certain states, especially the state of Florida, this is what, what he's saying. He was also saying that a lot of major cities are in Florida. You got Orlando, you got Miami, you got Tampa. And um, each city is two hours away from each other, where he's situated, and he likes that. And he also went on to say that um, throughout each and every day of the week, there's always something to do. There's always an event, rain or shine, doesn't matter what season you're in, winter, spring, summer, or fall. It doesn't matter. There's always something to do each and every single day. And uh, he said in Canada, it's not like that. And he's right. He's right. And he also went on to say a lot of the major cities in Canada, they're so far from each other. What are the major cities that come to mind? You have Ottawa, you have Montreal, you have Vancouver, and you have Toronto. But they're all far away from each other. And they're not as live as these other major cities in the United States. And he also said a lot of Canadians are boring. They don't go out anywhere, even when they can, right? So America is still the place to be. And this shows you, man, that America is Mystery Babylon, the whore that sitteth upon many waters, the whore that committed fornication with all the kings of the earth. And this is the place to be at. It's a melting pot. And this is where everybody wants to come. Now, don't get me wrong. There's other, there's other countries that are very beautiful, like the Netherlands, Deutschland. Nice, beautiful places. The standard of living is good. You have Spain, different parts of Europe. Very beautiful. Very, very uh, beautiful women. Uh, uh, good food. Standard of living is good. 
But this is the place to be. It's America. People still want to come here because of how fun it is, right? So it just shows you that the scriptures don't lie and what we're teaching is correct going into Revelation, the 17th chapter. So anyway, I did a lot of talking. It's about five minutes into the video and I haven't brought in out a precept or a scripture. So let's get that. Um, oh, my bad. Let's get... <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's get Revelation chapter 17. The Doom of Babylon. Let me just put my uh, thing up here. Let me, let me get this. I'm going to start here. Revelation chapter 17 verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. It's talking about America. America sitteth upon many waters, starting with the people, and also how they have an embassy situated in every country. Right? And with that embassy, they control different nations. And they have their military in these different countries as well. Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And that's true. That's what you see here in the video. Um, you know, because that guy, he's an inhabitant of the earth, and he is made drunk. Look at Look what he's doing, man. You know, he's at the poolside. He has tattoos all over him. He's not really a nice guy. You know, he's not really righteous. You can tell by that. And he's smoking a cigar. That's the American way of doing things. That's that wine. And that has polluted the minds of the people. But I just want to say America is still the place to be. If you want to have fun, go to America. If you want to live your, your best life to the fullest, go to America. And that's what he's telling you. In this day and age, even though America is in its decline, people are still flocking to America. That's crazy, man. That's, that's crazy. So anyways, it says here, verse 2, I'll read it again. With whom the kings of the earth, that's right, um, the other uh, rulers of the other nations, have committed fornication. And how do they commit fornication? By doing business, trade and commerce. And following uh, America, American ways. That's why you have a term called Americanization. That's why there's a McDonald's in a majority of all the countries in the world. That's why you have a McDonald's in almost every country in the world. And that's done through trade and commerce and business. And these uh, kings, these different rulers writing certain things into law so so their country can become more Americanized, right? So that's that fornication. That's what it's talking about. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication, going into the philosophies. Because America, you can come here and be whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. You can worship anything that you want. You can be a man. You can be a woman. You can be a child. You can be a pedophile. You can be a wicked person, man. And not get persecuted for it. With the wine of her fornication. And that's what these people really want to do. That's what this guy just really wants to do. He just wants to have a good time and freak off. And so-called be free. Now, there are some things that, that he's saying is true. You know, Canada, man, it's, it's like... like Pretty much, man, like you, you don't, the weather isn't really that good, especially over here in Ontario. You pretty much get five and a half months of bad weather, winter. That starts from mid-October all the way to March, April. So he's right. You know, you can't really do much in the winter time. And if you want to go to these different cities, you have to travel and you have to fork out a lot of money to do that. And the standard of living is higher over here, your tax. 
Like for example, if you were to make a hundred thousand dollars in Canadian here, and you take that to the states, you know how much that would be? Seventy-three thousand dollars. So even if you're making six figures over here, it doesn't equate to what you're going to make in America. And the reason why I'm bringing that out is because the standard of living in America is not as bad as it is over here. You're not going to be taxed as heavily as you are in America, as opposed to living here in Canada. So even if you make six figures here, like 100K a year and up, it's not really that good compared to how you would live in the States making $73,000 a year in certain states, right? So this is America is the place to be at, man. It is. It really is. It really is. All right. So anyways, let's move on. Verse 3. So we carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. That's right. And the woman is America, and that beast is going into NATO and the EU. Right? NATO and the EU. NATO and the EU. All right? Having a... Uh, full of names. Having uh, names of... Full of names of blasphemy. Having seven heads and ten horns. Right? Okay, that's that's NATO in the EU, and that's what America is on. They they're in control of that beast. So the seven heads are the 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 major nations. I believe Great Britain is one of them. France, I think Germany, and I forgot the other one, man. It's I just forgot it, man. I don't know. It just slipped my mind. And the ten horns, other states. Verse 4, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold. Really, she's a harlot, and that's how harlots dress to get your attention. But really, those colors are symbolic for royalty. And that's how she is. She's a royal hoe. That's how she gets down. And she's decked out. And really, when you go into the scriptures, a woman isn't supposed to look like this. A woman is supposed to be dressed in modest apparel with her head cover. And America isn't like that. It isn't a modest country. It's all about extravagance. That's why they consume 70 to 80% of the world's resources. That's why... That's why... They're all about fast food, fast cars, fast living. That's America. You can come here and do whatever you want. There's nothing modest about America. Hell, you can be an open sodomite if you want. You can change your sex. I said that earlier. You, 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 as a man, you were born as a man. You can chop your rod off. You can push it in and uh, have a vagina, an artificial vagina. And you can have other men pop you. That's how wicked this place is, man. And uh, and and you know, it, it's it's you know, porn pornography is pushed heavy out here. And it's to the point now uh, that that whole trans transgender shit is being is being made into straight porn now, man. This place is fucked. But anyways, I don't want to go off topic. You know, um, I was reading I was reading about that earlier. You know. Pretty much trans porn is now considered to be straight porn. It's messed up. But at the end of the day, porn is porn. It's fornication. It's filthy. But I'm going to move on. Verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. And it is not a mystery anymore. It was a mystery of time in the past. But it ain't, it ain't a mystery anymore because prophecy has fulfilled. And, and we're living what the scriptures was talking about. We're living in it right now. It's no longer a mystery. And, you know, it reminds me of, I believe, Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, about how the mystery of iniquity has been revealed. And that goes into the so-called white man. But who's in charge of America? The mystery Babylon. It's Esau Edom. Starting with the so-called Jew. 
He's in charge of mystery Babylon. So, you know, those scriptures or that precept, it goes hand in hand with this. You can relate it to this. Now, in the context, it's talking about the so-called white man, but you can relate it to that. But it's no longer a mystery because prophecy has fulfilled and we're seeing it play out. And real soon, America, a.k.a. Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth is about to be destroyed by thermal nuclear fire. So you people, man, you can, you can live it up, man. Go to Florida, go to L.A., go to California. Go down south. Go party. Go to go to um, what is it called? I think it's Louisiana. Go experience Mardi Gras. Go get your shit off. Come over here. Become an entrepreneur. But real soon, this place is going to be destroyed, man. Thus saith the Bible. Uh, verse six. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yahweh Shai. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Yeah, you know, a lot of Israelite blood has been spilled, especially righteous Israelite blood. Going into the prophets and the saints that were over here, the children of Israel, they were killed over here. And it's going to play out too. It's going to play out again. You know, a lot of, a lot of saints, a lot of brothers, you're going to die. A lot of brothers are going to die. I mean, leave, uh, you know, you better... You know, a lot of you brothers, you're wearing white garments right now. You, do you understand why you're wearing white garments? If you're wearing white, it's not. it just doesn't symbolize purity. It, it symbolizes sacrifice. You're about to be put on the chopping block for the name of Yahweh Bashim Yabashai. So when you come into this truth, you're involved in something very, very serious. Very, very serious. Scripture says, make thy body a living sacrifice. Briefly paraphrasing. That's what you're doing. It's not just about you going on the highways and, and preaching the word. Yeah, that's a part of it. But you're really going to have to put your life on the line in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh But yeah, the martyrs of, of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, the wolves are the ones that stood strong in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh for the truth. So anyways, and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Wow, look at this hoe. Look at this harlot. Wow, she looks kind of good. <laughs> admiration you know she looks kind of good but really she's going to lead to your death um actually what else should i get uh, i was thinking about another precept it slipped my mind but anyway verse seven and the angel said unto me wherefore didst thou marvel i will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and is yet. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are the seven mountains. On which the woman sit, and those are going into seven governments, but ultimately, um, they're they're going to be destroyed, man. Pretty much destroyed, brought to hell. Okay, and and they're not written in that book of life. <laughs> you know, if you're not found written in the book of life, you're pretty much done. It's over. I think that's in Revelation. Um, I think it's in twenty one. Or 22, I believe. Those who are not found written in the book of life will not, uh, I believe, partake in the kingdom of heaven. I believe. But uh, America is pretty much done for. You know, it's done for. All right. So anyways, let's move on. Uh, actually, I had something else. I want to go into Revelation 18. Uh, this is Revelation chapter 18, verse 15. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and has become the habitation of devils. And the hold of every foul spirit and cage and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And 
Babylon is going to fall. It's going to fall by thermal nuclear destruction and it will become a habitation of devils. Going into those desert uh, creatures. Because that's this, this place is going to be made into a wasteland. Right? A wasteland. After its destruction. Post-destruction, it's going to be a wasteland, man. Nothing pleasant will dwell over here. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. What are those hateful birds? Like your vultures and apex predator birds. They're not pleasant to look at. I'm not talking about not, not, not no doves or parrots. Pretty much uh, vultures and the conies and all that. Verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And pretty much, man, um, when America goes down, these nations are going to mourn due to the fact that they can no longer make money off of the whore. That whore is a cash cow, right? They're no longer going to make money. It's like these, how do you think China got so rich? It's because they made money off of America. That's why they're able to sell their goods over here. And when you look at the goods that you purchase in the store, a majority of it, a majority of the items that you buy, it says made in China. They're making money off of that. These are the nations. They're, gonna, they're not going to be happy when the whore goes down. How am I going to make money? Verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. And that ye receive not of her plagues. Yeah, and um, yeah, you, you can't be partakers of her sins, man. And how are you going to come out of her? You're going to come out of her through via the chariots. But in order for that to happen, you have to mentally and spiritually come out of America in your mind. And you have to build a relationship with Yahweh Bashim El Shai before he delivers you. And that you receive not of her plagues. And she's going to receive the same plagues that Egypt has received. But it's going to be far more greater. Because that major plague is talking about thermal nuclear destruction. And also Yahweh Shai coming back and destroying this place. But you're going to receive other plagues. You're going to receive uh, martial law. You're going to see. You're going to receive uh, these other troops. These foreign troops invade this land. You're going to. You're going to receive a financial collapse. That's another form of a plague. Race riots. That's a plague. The list goes on. Verse five. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High remembered her iniquities. That's right. And the Lord, He hasn't forgotten what America has done. And you know, uh, yeah, he hasn't forgotten. And it's reached onto heaven. He's, he's seeing all the wickedness, whether it's done covertly or overtly. He sees it. He sees all the wickedness. All the wickedness that our people have done and all these wicked other nations have done. He sees it. Going back to how th this uh, nation was founded, or that nation was founded, America, I mean, was founded through rape, robbery, and murder. Uh, the Native Americans' land, lands being taken away from them, being stolen. You Israelites being put into slavery. And hell, yeah, even you, um, even you other nations that, have, uh, that, that actually came over here, you were getting jacked up. You were being treated bad. Right? Uh, you, if you go into the history of sundown towns, that just didn't apply to you Negroes, man. You, you Israelites, you Judites. It didn't just apply to you, it applied to Moab too. Um, during uh, the 1800s, I believe it was the mid-1800s going into the early 1900s, 1920s. You Moabites were treated badly, man. You, you guys were a part of that sundown town uh, era as well. You were being treated bad. Your neighborhoods were being burnt down. You were being burnt alive. You were being killed. That's why they have a, a saying called... Uh, you, he doesn't have a Chinaman's chance. What do you think that came from? That came down. That came from you. You going and you working on the railroad, and you being blown up 
by dynamites. And you being uh, lynched and killed in, in sundown towns, man. So, hey, you, you other nations that came over here, man, you were treated like shit, too. The Lord sees that because you're not supposed to just murder people, man. Because a lot of you other nations, you were getting murdered. A lot of you jakes, you were just getting murdered, man, by these devils. So, yeah, the Lord, he sees everything and he remembers it. And, you know, our people, they have selective memory. They, they forget. You know, they have a short memory and sometimes they have selective memory. And that's due to Stockholm Syndrome. And they forget what the so-called white man has done. They forget their humble beginnings in America. Just because they get some white pussy, because maybe, maybe they got a white wife. And I'm going to be vulgar, man. A lot of you jakes forget where you come from, man. Just because you get some fucking concubine, some poontang. Now you've made it. You get, you get a million dollars or you get a billion dollars. You've made it. Now, you, now everything goes out the window. You forget everything. But the Lord didn't forget. And He requires things that have passed. He requires which has passed, man. He requires that. He hasn't forgotten. Forgotten, Salakia. Verse 6. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, and double unto her, double according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double, and that's why she's gonna reap what she sowed, and she's gonna receive double, a double comeuppance, man, double judgment, and that's perfect judgment, and America is going to be hit with two hundred million missiles. And on top of that, burnt up by Yahweh Shai and the angels. And it will never be inhabited ever, ever, ever again. Verse 7. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. Yeah, you live deliciously in luxury. Not a care in the world. You know. Not a care in the world. Do as much drugs as you can. I never wear the same. I never wear the same socks twice. <laughs> you know, live deliciously. Profit off. Uh, you know, she made a hundred percent profit off of slavery. Hundred percent profit. Hundred percent profit. She made a hundred percent profit off of the land that she has stolen. Hundred percent. No reparations given. And the reparations and the reserves that you are given is garbage. It's nothing. And that's not going to fill the void of all the intergenerational trauma that you have experienced. So she's lived deliciously, man. Finger licking good, man. So much torment and sorrow give her. That's right. Punish her. Make her cry. Make her feel pain. And that's all America is going to get. Pain. Pain. Reminds me of that song, that song that Styles P made. All I know is pain. <laughs> Going back in early 2000. Pain. That song was heavy, man. That guy, that guy is an intellectual, though. I, I can't lie. That guy is a smart guy. Styles P. Anyway, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. And that's why they call it the virgin daughter of Babylon. That's a part of it. You know, that scripture, well, that precept comes to mind. The queen is really a bitch. And you spell it uh, Q-U-E-A-N. A queen is a bitch. And you don't want to be a queen. A queen is a bitch. And am no widow and shall see no sorrow. And that's how these Americans think. That's the mindset over here. Like they're never going to go down. You know, they dropped, uh, they dropped the atom bomb on Japan. It, I think they did several bombings. I, I forgot the number. I think it was six or seven. But the major ones was on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Little boy and fat boy. You don't think that's going to come here? And it is. But you're gonna get it through through nuclear destruction. You're gonna you're gonna be destroyed. And you're gonna experience sorrow. And it's gonna be broadcasted. Scripture says the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. 
And all eyes will see your destruction, man, via through these satellites, man. Let me get the precept. Virgin, daughter, battle line. Where am I right now? Revelation 18 and 8. Uh, let me get, um, let's get virgin, daughter. Let's get that one. Virgin, daughter. It's in, uh. Yeah, it's Isaiah 47. I like that one. I'm just checking just to see. I'll just see other ones here. Just make sure. Anyway, it says uh, Isaiah chapter 47, verse 1. Lament for Babylon. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Huh. That's right. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. This is the place to be. Right, we'll never get invaded. We have the strongest military. There's never been a foreign occupation to ever come on American soil. Well, that's not going to be the case in the future. You're going to be bombed by 200 million missiles. And these foreign troops are going to invade this place. And jack you up. Verse 2. Take the millstones and grind meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yeah, your shame. Your nakedness. You're going to be naked. Your shame. You're going to be exposed for who you are. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. Oh, your shame will be seen. All right? When you go down. Shame will be seen. Exposed for who, for who you really are. You know, when you get jacked up, man, people are going to realize like, yo, America really did deserve that. Because of how evil that nation is. Starting with the elites that run it. You know, um, they're going to realize, you know, they really deserve that judgment. Verse 4, as for our Redeemer, Yahweh of armies, is his name, the Holy One of Yahshua Allah. Yeah, so anyways, um, what is it, 32 minutes now? Yeah, so that's pretty much all I got. I hope this was edifying. Until next time, just want to give all praises, glory, and honor to one too. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah HaKodash, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Grey Millstone that were well. Peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect. Kwame Asha'Allah and Ababa Ball. Shalom.